My dear brothers and sisters, how many of you find that following Jesus is predictable, a very clear path, and that Jesus is always exactly as you want him to be? I didn't think so. Jesus often defies our expectations and he certainly defies the expectations of the disciples. Jesus says, whoever wishes to become great among you must be your servant. For the Son of Man came not to be served, but to serve. Jesus is still great. He's still a leader, a king, someone with authority, but in a very different sense that the one James and John have imagined. Jesus is a leader who serves, a king who walks among his people, not one who reclines in some throne far away. But then why call him a king at all if he doesn't act like one? How can Jesus the servant and Jesus the king possibly be the same person? After all, a king is someone who yields a lot of power who can even be a tyrant and lord his authority over his subjects. Think about the kings you've heard of. Henry VIII of England divorced and executed wives who didn't bear him a living son. He executed clergy and other rulers that didn't do what he wanted. He possessed great power and wealth and used it for his own personal agenda at the expense of people's lives. Or what about Emperor Nero of Rome? He was a tyrant too. He executed countless people, even his own mother. It was also his mission to ruthlessly torture and execute Christians. And he's considered the first major persecutor. Nero also eliminated those who might rival his throne and was described as being obsessed with personal popularity, which is yet another trait we associate with those in power. Do any examples of kings who serve, who are willing to die for their people come to mind easily? Although this kind of leader may have existed in history, we do not really associate service or being willing to die with the role of a king. And yet we do have a king who serves and who is willing to die for each one of us. Jesus defies our expectations and redefines the cultural understanding of who a king really is. Jesus uses his authority to teach others about God and God's kingdom. Jesus uses his power to heal the sick, to grant sight to the blind. Jesus uses his position to be an example of how to live in response to God's love. Jesus shows us who is a king or really any kind of leader is truly meant to be. One who serves their people and uses their power always for the benefit of others. So it is not Jesus who has this whole king and leader identity wrong, but I think it's you and me. Likewise, our stereotypes of a servant are not really in line with who Jesus is either. Let's take a fictional example that are representative of how we tend to imagine servants. First, Cinderella. She's ordered around mercilessly by her stepsisters and stepmother, having to take care of nearly all the domestic duties. She's treated without dignity and respect, overlooked as a human being. Her duties are done quietly and she must shrink who she is because she has no other choice. Take the maids and butlers at Buckingham Palace. They are like a well-oiled machine. They are always a step ahead of their superiors and they keep the house running without much recognition. They also know all the gossip of the house and share that with one another. Not only do they have the details on their superiors, but they also know secrets about one another. So the servants are often caught in their own mix of power, struggles, lies and negotiations. But Jesus isn't a timid servant or caught up in local gossip. 
He isn't without agency or a full personality. Servanthood doesn't mean you neglect who you are or hide behind the scenes all the time. It means that you use who you are to the benefit of others and that the focus of your life is always outward. Jesus might be many things, but he certainly is not meek and mild. Nor does he simply follow rules for the sake of good order. He chooses to be king. He chooses to be servant. He has agency and he uses that way of life to make a difference, to transform lives and to create change. Jesus does not conform to our expectations, but rather he defies them. Our Jesus is both servant and king, king and servant. For him, these two identities go hand in hand. He's both a leader who serves and a servant who leads. But what does all of this mean for you and for me? It is well and good that Jesus is our king who came to serve. But we aren't kings or rulers, right? This is true. But in some way or another, each of us, my dear brothers and sisters, is a leader, which means we can follow Jesus' example of servant leadership. You can embody qualities like compassion, attentive listening and encouragement. If you are a parent, for instance, you are a leader in your family. It's up to you to set the example for your children in how to be compassionate, empathetic human beings by interacting with them that way. This is both an act of leadership is setting an example and an act of service is treating them well. Or perhaps you are in a supervisory position at work and the people you are supervising refuse to collaborate on an important project. Your task could be to use your position to step in and model collaboration. In this way, you are leading them in the direction you want to go and you are serving them by being willing to walk alongside them instead of loading your power over them. Let's come down to something more practical, the church. Let's look at bishops, us priests and religious. So often, so many of us constantly running after power. We live in our ivory castles, too demanding sometimes on people. We often make a class distinction and I won't elaborate on that. We're indifferent to the problems of the laity. We come across sometimes as being rude and arrogant and we are far from being the servant king that Jesus won, was. I don't know what happens to all our ideals, to all our aspirations, to all our dreams when we want to be a priest, when we join the seminary. All of that goes for a toss. One's position and power goes to our head. We become authoritative. We forget that we have to be servant leaders. Let's come down to the pews. To you, my lay people. Fighting constantly for positions of power. Wanting always to be in the limelight. Not wanting to step down and make way for others. Often indulging in a term that I have coined some years ago in mango tree gossip. You want to know where Father Sabi is getting transferred? Sit under the mango tree. You'll come to know it before you might come to know it from me or from the bishop. Not being appreciative of others who are equally gifted and talented, but maybe they're constantly critical of them. We've lost the concept, my dear brothers and sisters, of servant leadership because we've lost focus on Jesus. Everything is about me, I, power, authority, position, status. We've spoken about priests and bishops. We've spoken about the lay faithful. Let's talk about me. Take off my outer garments. Put a towel around my waist. Wash the feet of others. That's not my job. So get going, my dear brothers and sisters. Get following Jesus. Get leading. Get serving. Get to this life of being the servant leader that Jesus calls each one of us to be. And don't worry about the world's expectations or even your own. Jesus will lead you 
and serve you every step of the way. Just remember, on this beautiful feast of Christ our Universal King, Jesus does not conform to our expectations, but He defies them. God bless and do have a Jesus-filled day.